Yeah, I, I did. You guys want to introduce yourselves? My name is Damian Eccles. I'm 36 years old and released today from death row for a crime I did not commit over 18 years ago. My name is Jesse Mitchell, 36 years old. I've been released from ADC, served 18 years for a crime I didn't commit. Everybody else. Everybody, come on. Yeah, every, everybody. Yeah. Why? Why? Everybody. So, all the folks that are Lori and the family and uh, the Eddie and Natalie and Yeah. No, I would just wait. I would okay. wait. I just want Lori yeah. and uh, oh, sorry, but we're just waiting for the rest of the family. Oh, all the way down to the base. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll be fine. Real bad Represent Jason Baldwin, uh, obviously my client Jason. Aaron Casanelli, uh, who is uh, she and I worked together in Little Rock, and is now part of the team. Jeff Rosenzweig, and I represent Jesse Miss Kelly. Uh, Jesse's other lawyers, uh, Michael Burt and Nancy Pemberton from California, could not be here today. Steve Braga from Washington D.C. represent Damien. Uh, Donald Horgan from San Francisco also represent Damien. And Dennis Reardon from San Francisco as well, and I represent Damien. Patrick Banker. Oh, I'm sorry. Patrick Banker from Little Rock, um, and I represent Damien. Laura Nyrider from the Center on Wrongful Convictions of Youth in Chicago, representing Damien. And I'm Rachel Geiser. I'm the private investigator that helped work on Damien's case. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> This is the Ivy Center on Wrongful Convictions Youth. Cheryl Herman, I am a legal assistant with Patrick Benka. Carol Benka, I'm Patrick Benka's wife and law partner. Where do we begin? <laughs> Damien, six yes. years ago I sat with you on death row and we talked about when this day would happen and here it is. 
Can you describe what you are feeling in this moment? Still very much in shock, still overwhelmed. You know, you kind of have to take into consideration that I've spent almost the past decade in absolute solitary confinement, so I'm not used to being around anyone, much less this many people. It's kind of overwhelming. Jamie, with the Alpha plea, the judge said it was a plea he could not, not dealt with on the time on the bench. Right. You have to say to the court's purpose that you're guilty of a crime that you profess to the judge you did not commit. Right. Is this justice? Is this what you've been looking for? Is it bittersweet? It's not perfect. It's not perfect by any means, but at least it brings closure to some areas and some aspects. You know, we can still uh, bring up new evidence. We can still continue the investigations we've been doing. Um, we can still try to clear our names. The only difference is now we can do it from the outside instead of having to sit in prison and do it. Damien, Jesse, uh, Jason, are any of you concerned about when you go out, uh, there are some people who are still angry about this? Do you have concerns about that? Very much, y'all. Why not? Why, why do you I mean, that? I'm concerned because you I'm, yeah, because, I mean, even when you're in prison, it goes on every day. You have to worry about your own safety. It don't, I mean, it don't, it, don't, it don't matter what the crime it is. You still got to worry about your safety, regardless. Jason, how about you? I can't worry about what someone else may do. I just have to, you know, stay around the people I love and who love me and care about me, and you know, just trust. We can't live our lives in fear. And as far as your question earlier, Damien. This was not justice, you know. In the beginning, we told them nothing but the truth that we were innocent, and they sent us to prison for the rest of our lives for it. And then we had to come here, and the only thing that the state would do for us was to say, hey, we'll let you go, only if you admit guilt. And that's not justice, no matter how you look at it. They're not out there trying to find who really murdered those boys. And I did not want to take the deal from the get-go, however, they're trying to kill Damien and sometimes you just got to fight the gun to save somebody. Jason and I have talked about this and I think it's important to say it, it, Jason was initially resistant to this proposal because it was against the principles and the things that we've been working for in this case. We achieved one of two goals today and that was securing these young men's freedom. It didn't secure or get the, the ultimate goal, which is a finding that these young men are actually innocent beyond all doubt of the crimes for which they were convicted. Jason was initially reticent to this proposal as a matter of principle. I can only imagine the Sophie's choice that he faced in agonizing over this decision. There are many reasons that Jason, I know, made this decision, and one of them was that it took another man off death row. Jason literally saved a human being's life today. That's an honorable, honorable position. That has integrity. I can tell you that I've been so proud to represent Jason. I am prouder to be his friend because of the nobility and the honor of what he did here today. He's a hero. His name again, sir. Blake Hendricks. H-E-N-D-R-I-X. What about you, Damien? How difficult was this for you? How was it? How difficult was it for you to make this decision? To be honest, it wasn't that difficult. I'm just tired. You know, this has been going on for over 18 years, and it's it's been an absolute living hell. Yeah, let, let me just add a little bit onto that, because these decisions are client decisions. The decision Jason made, unbelievable, heroic. Damien's decision different, different places. You can't judge second-guess these decisions unless you've been in their shoes. Spend 17 years on Varna, most of the time in solitary. You could ask, did you really do the right thing? He's the only one who's been there. He made the Tortured right decision. every day in there. Absolutely. And what do, Absolutely. You do, what do you do now that, in Jason, in your mind, justice hasn't been served, but yet you're free? What will you do I'm now? I'm going to live my life the best I can and enjoy every moment of it. What's the first thing you want to do? I don't know. I'm just kind of, you know, going with the flow right now. That's you know, adjudicated. My family anything? and friends are, you know, helping me and taking care of me. Is there anything that any of y'all, or through your attorneys or yourself, could tell the investigators that might point them in a different direction or toward different suspects? Is there anything now that you've been adjudicated and you can't be held guilty for or found guilty for or charged with it? That I, can, I know I can speak for everybody and say no. 
the, these kids are absolutely innocent of the crimes for which they are convicted. Therefore, they have no leads to even suggest. Completely innocent and unaware of what happened out there at Ten Mile Bayou. Jesse, that is what I have to yeah, it, it, let me let me just point out one aspect of what happened today. These men not only walked out, they created today by this plea, to me, proof positive of their innocence and the state's recognition of it. Because does anyone believe that if the state had even the slightest continuing conviction that they were guilty, that they would let these men free today? It would have never happened if the state hadn't come to the conclusion that the plea is entered today or their, their convictions are overturned in December and they walk free then. Um, and uh, what it would mean is continued confinement. But to me, the state's acceptance of an Alfred plea in which they maintain their innocence and releasing them is evidence of the state's recognition of their innocence. How much of an influence what, 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 what do you think were the factors, what, what do you think were the factors that the state was most afraid about this upcoming evidentiary here? The alleged juror misconduct, the fiber I mean, what do you think you know, they were most afraid of? Revealing. Well, look at the court documents, because what the state agreed to today was a finding by the court in, in granting the new trial that there was such compelling new evidence of DNA along with all of the evidence that no reasonable jury would convict these defendants at a new trial. That finding had to be made before the plea could be entered. And I think that, the, that it's an implicit recognition by the state that that is the finding that would have been made at the hearing in December. How much of an influence did the national publicity have? Let's let this guy go. And, and the, you know, the support from the celebrities, the national publicity, the fact that perhaps the state didn't want to go through a highly publicized trial again. How much did that in, impact what happened today, the resolution? Sorry. Damien, anyone? I think, yeah. it, uh, I think it had a pretty big impact just because... Um, they knew they wouldn't be able to get away with a lot of stuff that they got away with the first time. They knew there would be more people watching this, more attention on this case, so they wouldn't be able to pull the same tricks. You know, basically when we went to trial the first time, they came in with ghost stories, rumors, um, innuendo, things that really had nothing to do with the case whatsoever. And they knew now there were, the whole world was watching them. They wouldn't be able to do the same thing. They would have to come with some sort of concrete, physical evidence, and they didn't have any, and they knew that. What have you guys talked about now that you've been back together? We haven't really had much time to talk about anything because we've been in separate places at the jail and, you know, just the few minutes that we've been together before the hearing and now, so we haven't had a great deal of time to talk about. Is there anything you can say about Jesse's Lori's with you now? Can yes. Can talk about what her role in all of this has meant for you and the case as a whole? Lori is the thing that's kept me strong and sane, that's allowed me to survive over the past 18 and a half years. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. She's probably done more on work on this case than anyone else who's been involved with it from the very beginning. You know, she spends pretty much her every waking moment of every day working on this case. Mr. Baldwin, can you talk a little bit about more about coming to the decision that this is something you need to get done? Excuse me, sir. Just I'm sorry. About coming to the decision that this is something you did not want to do, but you decided you had to do it. I was willing to, you know, if it was just me, as much as I'd hate to, you know, just be in that place, I'm, I'm obviously ready to get out of prison. I want to be out, you know, deserve to be out. But I was ready to fight it. Trial and court as much as possible, but he had it so much worse than I had it. You know, on death row, and it's just insufferable to put a person through that and for any more minutes. And I don't even know why I didn't even think too much about that at first. You know, when the plea came to me, but I'm just glad that he's out now and he's going to be with his wife and you know, surrounded by people who love him and care for him, and it's not just intent on hurting him. I want to publicly thank Jason, too, just to let him know that I do acknowledge what he did, that he did want to keep fighting. He didn't want to take this deal in the beginning. And I recognize and acknowledge that he did do it almost entirely for me. Thank you. Mr. Broderick.
minutes ago, the state stood What's up that? and, and <laughs> demanded that these guys were, they believed that they were the guys who did it. How do you guys feel having worked on this case, having reached this resolution, knowing that the state is still asserting the guilt of these guys? Well, it, it, as Dennis explained a minute ago, when you look at the case, the way it's resolved, you just don't see that. The Alfred plea is a very unusual plea. In doing 30 years of criminal defense practice, I've only seen it once or twice before. Prosecutors usually say when you put that on the table, no, there's no way you could plead guilty and maintain your innocence. Either you say it didn't or you don't. It's your take the regular plea. But this deal they took, and they took it because they wanted finality. I think they wanted it as much as we wanted Damien off death row. Uh, there is no doubt on this side of, of the courtroom that these guys are innocent. None. None whatsoever. And as strongly as they may think their convictions are valid, we think they're invalid. And history will judge that. And you made some of that history, Joe, so thank you. Do all of you have to stay in Arkansas? No, no travel restrictions. Damien, what's the first thing that you're going to do now that you're free after 18 years? rest. You know, ever since we found out about this, I haven't slept. I haven't slept for about four days now, and I'm just completely and absolutely exhausted. And Lori, you've been fighting. I mean, you single-handedly helped get most of it accomplished. Tell me your reaction today. How do you oh. feel? Well, I wouldn't say single-handedly. <laughs> but, um, well, I'm just thrilled with, you know, with the results. That, you know, we have these three men out, and I have this man that I love very much with me, so I'm thrilled. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason's not used to this. He's <laughs> ready to go, so Jason and I are going to excuse ourselves. Thank you all very much. Jason wants uh, to send his greatest regards to my co-counsel, John Phillips Bourne of San Francisco. Of all of the lawyers here, the, the one lawyer that's been on this case the longest, and to me, the architect that built a case of innocence for all three of these men. And Jason and I want to say thank you, John. Hope thank you, John. you all again. This is just for now. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah.